you guys, how much was it them, you know, grinding this game into, almost to a halt? Hey, I mean, you said it was a weird game, especially in that, that, that first half and that second quarter. The whistle was blown so much. It was we couldn't get into a rhythm. Um, you know, we did a good job of coming out in the first quarter, uh, but the game just – it's just got unraveled with you know all the all the calls that was going on. We got in foul trouble. Some of our big key guys, Channy, KF, Swish, got in foul trouble, and you know they just broke our rhythm. They did a great job. I mean, those guys played desperate basketball, and you know with them going, you know, losing the last three, so you know they played some good ball, and you know we got to figure it out. You know, which we will. Are you surprised at all that the same problems that you had in Milwaukee were largely the same thing in terms of turnovers, not sharing the ball as well, those sorts of things? Well, I mean, I think uh, some of our turnovers um, were forced. Some of them was attack turnovers. Um, I know, I think one of my turnovers was unforced. I think, uh, you know, Tristan hit me down the lane on one. I kind of missed bobbled it and tried to kick it out for Swish. And Bamute got his hands on that one. I think the one that was careless was probably at the end of the second quarter, but I thought I had RJ streaking down the court. Um, you know, so, you know, we got to get the ball popping a little bit more, but it's easy to say that when you don't make shots, you know, as well. So, um, you know, we, we'll figure out, you know, offensively what we need to do better. And, you know, coach is tinkering, tinkering with a little, you know, some lineup changes, some, you know, some personnel things right now, which we'll figure out as well. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, in the, the side story today, um, there was this neat little nugget about Ty at halftime of, of Game 7, like coming to you in front of everybody and say you have to be better. Um, and you were upset about it. And it, was, it was the whole thing. Have you have you thought since then about what Ty was doing at that time? And have you come to appreciate how he was kind of using like a almost like a mind trick to push a button there? Uh, I mean, it's game seven of the finals. I don't need a button to be pressed. Um, I was upset for a different reason. And, um, you know, he knew how to get to me, and that's fine. I mean, I'm, um, I responded the best way I know how I was going out there and playing the game that I love at a high level. And <clears throat> we was able to turn that game around. And, you know, in the third quarter, started with Swish. And then Kyrie kind of took it over, and I was able to you know, implement my points in the game, too. But you know, I've always loved anybody to challenge me, you know, uh, coach or player. A fan, you know it's uh, you know it's it's cool. But when you got a guy like Tilo, you know that um, you know that's uh, not afraid of uh, of anything, you know. And like I said, he's just so sure, sure of himself. So, um, and we have that confidence in him that he's allowed to say and do whatever he wants. You know, he's a, he's the a captain of the ship. I keep saying, I keep saying that. Um, well, we all, I think we both had to change things. Um, I think, um, he sacrificed, um, you know, more of the, of the load, um, you know, and he, and he just came to me at one point. I don't remember when it was. And he said, listen, in order for us to reach our ultimate potential, you gotta, you gotta be you, you know, you gotta lead this team and you know, I'm gonna take a step backwards, but I'm here the whole ride. And, uh, you know, and that was, uh, uh, you know, for a guy that, who implemented his whole, um, you know, Wade County and his career in Miami to do that, you know, and for us that we end up reaching our full potential, and he's seen some more than I did at that point in time, you know, he had already been to the mountaintop, so, um, you know, but I, I did um, a lot more catch and shoot, um, you know, in the corners and a lot more cutting. I learned how to cut and do the things that he um, he was accustomed to doing, so I learned a lot from him as well. Uh, Coach Lou said that tonight, you know, the Clippers were more desperate for a win coming off a three-game losing streak. Just how much do you think tonight was their play and how well they played versus what you guys could have done better? They played well, and we didn't play our best game. You know, Ron, I mean, so, so many of us have been around for the last couple of years, and we would, we would know what this room would be like after two losses like this two years ago or last year. And, and this year, obviously, the feeling's different. Like, every, you know, things are going to be okay. What? What is the uh, what is that a result of? What what causes um, this kind of you know of measured reaction after two pretty pretty poor? Games? Yeah, two pretty poor games for sure. You know, but an 82 game season, you're going to have you know a couple games, maybe a few games in a season where they're pretty poor. You hope that they're not back to back, but it happens, and, and it's happened to us in Milwaukee and out tonight. And 
Um, always, the best thing about this league is you always kind of get an opportunity right away to, to you know, be better. Now, three games in a row, you know, something to talk about. You know, so we need, we need to figure it out. But the, like I said, the good thing, you know, it's different from football where you got to wait a whole another week to try to redeem yourself. We get right back at it tomorrow night, you know, less than 48 hours. So, you know, we'd be all right. With, with Chris not playing right now and the fact that you and Dwayne are going to go up against each other tomorrow, both wearing some jerseys and don't say he across the front, it's, it's kind of like a moment in time where you, we can officially look back at the four year run that you guys had together. What's like your knee jerk reaction when you think about what you guys accomplished or, or what you guys yeah. meant? Um, <clears throat> I don't think I'm gonna look back at the four-year run. Um, I mean, I was, I don't know. I've been in, I was spent seven years here, and you know, and then I changed jerseys. He, he stayed in the same jersey. Um, you know, but I don't think I'm gonna look back. I, I mean, anytime I see him, I, I don't even think about really the times on the court. I just think about the friendship and the camaraderie that we've built over these last 14 years. You know, we got so many memories, you know, off the floor. And obviously, you guys know about what happened on the court, but um, you know those things is always always going to be there. And, you know, we know we, what we accomplished, what we uh, wanted to accomplish even more. But um, you know, it's a new day, it's a new time, and uh, I don't think I'm going to look back on it too much. Part of that friendship is having to wear the Cubs uniform. Will you walk <laughs> briskly through the United Center to walk around? The world? <laughs> Fred, I thought you was on my side. You don't really remind me about that. Uh, yeah, I gotta wear it. No, I gotta wear it. I gotta wear it. I, gotta, I mean, listen, I'm, you make a bet. Last year, uh, I think I lost, I lost to Draymond in the Ohio yeah. State, Michigan State. I sent my wine to him. Uh, I filled my bets. Now I lost to D Wade in the World Series. So now I gotta wear my Cubs uniform to the game tomorrow. So don't make fun of me, guys. Um, <laughs> what know. number is it? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. It's, 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 I'm always on the first bus. Come on, man. Sure Only time I'm not on the first bus is when I don't play. <laughs> I'm always on the first bus. So. Are you going to tear the sleeves at least? No, I'm not wearing it in the game, so I don't have a problem with that. But, uh, yeah, I'll be in it. I'll be in it. All right, guys, thank you. Able to do defensively, really kind of shut down the normal attempts and makes at the three-point line. Um, you know, it just got to a point where you know some of our guys were uh, our starters. Got us foul trouble going into the first, going into the second. Um, you know, put some pressure on us a little bit. Um, they got out going, got some easy ones. Um, you know, shot some free throws. Um, you know, I so said that's a veteran team down in the locker room, and um, you know they understood that. You know, we know each other well. We basically run almost the same plays. Um, you know, they were getting downhill and making plays. Um, did a good job of keeping them out of the paint initially, uh, with some bad bounces here and there, uh, some some tip, some tip outs that led to kind of two or three possessions um, that kind of wasted a lot of time. Um, so for us, uh, just got to be a little more gritty, especially when we're uh, defensive rebounding, including myself just being around that foul line area, you know, being ready to rebound those those long balls. Did you sense coming in it might be a grinded out affair? I mean, it, it could it could be either way, um, especially with that team. They're so talented, so. Um, you know they have guys that are able to do the dirty work as well as as well as be aggressively aggressive offensively and defensively. So we just had to match that um, going forward, especially when we play them again. It's a long season. This team's going to win a lot of games. We, we know that. But to have this type of performance coming off of Milwaukee, is there anything right now that's concerning you? Um, you know, there's definitely some adjustments to be made. Um, we'll watch film and go from there. Also understanding long season, these kinds of things happen. Uh, it seemed in the third quarter um, that you and Tristan had a disagreement on something. Was, can you tell us what that was? Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it was a disagreement. Um, it was just something that I saw. Um, you know, he saw as well. Um, you know, we weren't on the same page at that particular moment. But going forward, it stayed there in the huddle and we continued to play basketball. Now you guys had six assists in the final three quarters, and, and Ty mentioned something about LA turning you guys more into a one-on-one -on -one team with the things that they were doing defensively. When that happens, is there something else you guys can do as a team to to make sure that the ball continues to move? Um, just just find just find some uh, some continuity plays. But for us, I mean. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna live the same way, you got to be able to die the same way. And, and we have confidence in our one-on-one -on -one abilities as well as our post-up abilities. And we're still gonna keep going to that. I mean, no matter what, we're not gonna lose confidence in one another. Um, you know, T. Lou does a great job of, of managing the game, and myself and, and Bron too. So, um, 
you know, we, we don't want to put an excuse on us playing one on one. I mean, you know, because at the end of the day, we're, we're still really great players. But uh, going forward, just some matchups on the backside, on the weak side, we got to get some more action on that side.